You've written, you've recorded, you've mixed, and now it is time to master your track. But how do you go about it here in the iOS environment? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the Final Touch application here on my iPad to master my new song called Six and Eight. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And for the last month and then some, I've been working on my new song called Six and Eight, and it is finally time to take my final mix out of GarageBand, put it into Final Touch, put those few little finishing tweaks on my final mix, and then get it released and out to the world. Because I have not taken my own advice on this one. I have spent too much time obsessing over every little part of this song instead of just making a decision, getting it done, and getting it released, which is what I'll be doing in this video. So what we're going to do is we'll jump down into the iPad. I've sent it over from my iPhone to my iPad, so it is ready to go in my final mix here, and then we'll get into the mastering process. Okay, just jumping in here to let you know that this is a long video. So what I do next is go through all the preparation for how I get the file prepared, how I get it set up in GarageBand, send it over to Final Touch. So if you know how to do all that and you want to jump straight in to the mastering process in Final Touch, jump to the time that I've got listed at the bottom of the screen right now. So here we are in GarageBand on my iPad, and here is the final mix. And if you've been following along, this will look familiar to you. If you haven't, the playlist is down in the description. You can catch up on all of the videos if you so desire. But what we have here is we have our drums, which have caused me quite a few headaches. We have our bass track. We have piano. We have clarinet, which I have removed some of the parts of based on some advice from some folks that have given me. I've got a left and right guitar on here as well. And then I've got all my vocals. So I've got my lead vocal, a comp of my lead vocal, and we covered that in a previous video. I've got my uh, a cappella section vocal here, which is slightly different and on a different track. We've then got my vocal double. We've got background vocals, left, right, and center center and then we've got our lead vocal harmony which only is in the chorus section so how many tracks do we have here so we've got one two three four five six seven vocal tracks we've got two guitar tracks two virtual instrument tracks and two drum and bass tracks so we're at 13 tracks total which is not too bad uh, some of these are stereo tracks because they're virtual midi tracks and i've already had the optimizing performance here in GarageBand when i transferred it over to my ipad so we are now ready to mark Master. Now, if you're new to mastering, what we want to do with mastering is we want to improve the song and the golden rule of mastering is do no damage. So we do not want to do something in mastering that is going to take our mix here and make it sound worse. We want it to sound better and less is more when it comes to mastering. So you'll notice you might be underwhelmed by how little I do here in Final Touch once I transfer this over because it is in small micro moves. If you're having to move things a really long way, then you probably need to go back to the mixing process. There's probably some things lacking there. Let's just take a quick listen to how the mix is sounding at the moment. We'll come in here to a section where everything's going on and we'll hit play and take a listen. So she dragged me away All the while trying to say Son, there'll be time for all that You better start dancing Time after time we are standing So come, it has come together pretty well. I'm pretty happy with my final mix that I have here now. Now, if you looked at the meter at the top there while we were playing that back, let's just have another quick look at that. I'm happy to see that you're waltzing with me and we're dancing. You'll notice that despite my best efforts to keep all of the levels low here, you'll notice that all my tracks are at sort of the mid-range there, it is still pushing too hard. And someone actually made a comment on another video during the week, and I let them know that I would be tackling that in this video, which is the auto-normalization we have here in GarageBand. And my advice for GarageBand and for preparing to master is to actually reduce your volume down a bit, because all of these tracks at the moment combined are pushing that meter up too high. You would notice there, we'll just play it again here, you'll notice here that it's pushing up and it's hitting those yellow marks and it's leaving those little yellow dots there. And if we change the, the volume here, this is just changing. You can see there, it's changing the headphone volume. That is not a master fader. We do not have a master fader here in GarageBand to turn down the overall volume, but there is a little trick that we can use. So I'll play it back again and just watch that meter up the top. Drive. I'm happy to see that you're waltzing with me and 
we're dancing in six and eight. And the reason for that is that my vocals are sort of peaking a little bit there, which I actually wanted. So I wanted, I turned the vocals down on some advice from some previous videos, but they're still peaking up there just a little bit, which is meaning that we've, we've got that nice dynamic range we want, but we don't want them to be peaking so loud. So I'm using a trick here that I've used before, which is my FX volume, master volume hack. I've got a video on it, which I will link so that you can check it out in more detail. But basically we've added an FX track. We come in here to our mixer icon, we tap on the visual EQ and over here on the right of the visual EQ, we've got a volume slider. So we've got a gain slider on our EQ. So even though I'm not doing any EQ moves on here, I can drop. And what I'm probably going to do is drop this by about 5 dB here. So if we put this down to 5 dB and now hit play, watch our meter at the top there now. And you're probably thinking, well, now it's coming through a bit too quiet. Is, is this really going to be what we want? Well, the thing is that GarageBand here in iOS actually auto limits or auto normalizes is probably more correct your volume when you export something. So I'll actually show you a little example here because what I'm going to do is I'll export two versions of this. So here is my minus five dB version. In fact, I'll just tweak it. It's probably not going to be exactly minus five. There you go, about minus four dB. We'll hit done on that. What I'm going to do is I'll export this. So we'll go back to my songs here and I'm actually going to rename this one in here uh, version 8 and we will just put brackets here minus 5 db and hit done and I'll do the same I won't I won't keep you uh, here while I do all of this but what we now want to do is let's export this file as a WAV file so we'll tap and hold and then we will go share up the top here and then we're going to share this as a song so we want to export the song file now, not the project. Uncompressed wave, 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bit. You want the best quality when you're going to master. So we are going to tap on share now. And what I like to do is actually save a copy of these right here in the same place while I'm working on it. So I'm going to tap save to files. It's going to export this song. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save two different WAV file versions. And I'm going to jump into an app called Audio Share here on my iPad. And I'm going to show you the waveforms. And you'll just be able to get a bit of a visual idea of the difference between these final exported normalized WAV files between the minus 5 dB version and the 0 dB version. So I'll go away, export these two versions now and jump back in once we have these done. Just quickly to show you the process here of where we save this. So I'm on my iPad in GarageBand. I'm just going to tap add and this is going to add this first WAV file directly here into the same location. If we go to browse, in fact, because I was just there in my recent, go to GarageBand and here we are. So it's right there next to it. There's a WAV file. It's 63.2 meg and there's our 1.5 gigabyte uh, actual project file right next door. So I'll do this again for the other version and then we'll jump back. And there we go, we now have our two versions saved out here in my GarageBand folder. So I'm going to tap the home button, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to search for this app, which is called Audio Share. Now it's about a $3 or a $5 app. I bought it a long time ago. It is an excellent app for doing this sort of thing. And you can see here over on the left, I've already been playing around with this. So spoiler alert, I've already been doing some of this before. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete those. Let's just trash those files out of there because we're going to bring in version 8 and actually do this again. So what we can actually do with Audio Share is bring in and view the waveform, but also do some trimming of our waveform, which is really important for mastering because one thing Final Touch on iPad doesn't do is allow you to trim the start and the end of your song, which is super important when you're mastering. Now, the other way around this is what we could do is open these back in GarageBand, trim off the ends and resave them. So if you don't have Audio Share, don't fret. All you need to do is actually put that waveform back in GarageBand, cut off the end, just use some splits and edits, cut off the end, and then resave that out, and you'll be good to go. But I like Audio Share because we can just do some other cool little things in here. So I'm going to tap the little yellow button down the bottom here, and then I'm going to go to my document picker which is going to allow me to pop up here. And here we go. We're in my recent, which is where we can use this from because why not? And what I'll do is first of all, let's bring in this zero dB version. So we'll tap on that. It's going to import that in and there is our waveform. So this is the song. This is the waveform of that song. And you can see there that it is pushing it pretty high up there. So it's right up there in some of those sections. Like we've got some nice dynamic range here, which is fine, but we're really lacking in some headroom to do some mastering in here. Let's just hit play and play this back and hear what it sounds like out of audio share. And 
hit pause on that one. So not bad, all good. And if we went away with this, we'd be fine. But once we master it, what we'd probably find is it's sounding too compressed. It's sounding muddy. It's sounding a little bit harsh. And what we actually want to do is bring in our version with a little more headroom. So I'm going to press our yellow button again here. We'll go back to our document picker. And this time we're going to bring in our minus five dB version. And now we'll see that we've got, there's our original waveform, and here is our new waveform. So the difference is that here, it was really peaking a lot of the time, especially in our louder sections. With this version, it's only peaking those little bits. And unfortunately, with the auto normalization, it is still gonna push it to zero dB in those loudest sections, which is the vocals. And you'll see, like, let's if we come down to a section here and play, you'll hear the vocals really popping out and where these sort of peaks up to zero dB actually are. Soon there'll be time for all that you... So all that, so it's the that that is peaking, which is okay for a song like this. It's going to work out all right, but it's definitely a lot better having this headroom. It would be better if we could turn off auto normalization. You can on the Mac version, you can't on the iOS version, but this is the best way that I've found to give yourself that little bit of artificial headroom so that we can actually jump in and master. So that's enough of the technical stuff. I know you want to get into the actual mastering in Final Touch, but there's one more thing that we need to do before we do that. So this is the file that we're going to be using but we actually need to trim the end because if we come to the end of this file then you'll notice that we've got a long lead out time so let's just hit play on this about there's where we want it to fade out and finish but we've got an extra probably four seconds there on the end of the track that we don't actually want but never fear we can actually use some of the tools that we have here in audio sharing as i mentioned don't worry you can also use GarageBand if you want to but if we tap on the tools button up here in the top right corner we can actually trim and fade this we can do normalization and conversion too as i said audio share is cool i have to jump back in and do a full audio share video another time but let's go trim and fade and what we now have is we have these handles. Now the front of it, I've actually already got the half a second. So I've got half a bar at the front, which is exactly what I want. You don't want it to be right up against the start of your song because it's going to actually cut off um, if you're playing it back on a streaming service because a lot of them sort of fade in and then you're gonna miss the start of your song. So I always recommend half a second to a second at the front of your song, but at the back of your song, you don't want that much. So all we need to do is grab this handle here and position this where we actually want it to. And the beauty part is that if you tap and hold like I did there, it'll actually zoom in. Now it does look like that the waveform has completely ended there, but it's just, it's very low and it's just that final reverb. So the best thing to do is to actually play. And when it crosses that point, just make sure that that is exactly the point that we want this actually to end before we send this for mastering. Oh, and I tried to hold. To, I tried to be tricky there and hold to zoom to see if I could uh, see if I could actually see it a bit better. But um, let's just try this again. It's about right, but you can hear it actually cutting off now. Yeah. So what we actually want to do is we want to increase our fade out. So let's put our fade out up to say twenty milliseconds and actually move it back a little tiny bit. Probably back to about there. Oop, there we go. Back to about there. Let's just try this one again. Tap our playhead, hit play. And there you go, you get a nice gentle fade out. And that might even be a little bit too long. I kind of prefer a longer tail, especially for a single. If it was gonna be on an album, maybe I wouldn't fade it so much because you wanna get into your next track. But for a single like this, I'm comfortable with that. So now that we've done that, we can tap save in the top right corner. It's gonna trim and it's gonna save that audio. And there's our final version. So it's six and eight V8 minus five dB trimmed dot wave. And this is the file that we're now going to be sending over to our Final Touch application. We are finally gonna get into Final Touch and actually do our mastering. And you might be saying, Pete, this is a lot of process just to get this song over for mastering. You will thank me for doing these few little things, for making sure that you got some headroom and making sure that your start and your finish of your song is exactly how you want it. It's gonna make your mastering process so much better. So now let's dive into that and let's send this over to Final Touch for mastering.
So it is time to export to Final Touch, but I've got one little thing that I need to show you. I actually had a quick break between the first and second part of this video. I listened to the final mix and the vocals were just still too loud. So I had to go back and reduce down the vocals. I dropped the compression a bit and I dropped the overall volume of the vocals. So what you're seeing here now is version nine, the minus five trimmed version. So I've done all those other things I did before. And if you want to compare that to version eight, you can see here that there's just a few more places Places where the, the vocals stick out a little bit there. You can tell the, the little lines that are going right up to zero dB. When we come to our version nine, it's a little bit more uniform and I probably could have done more, but again, I had to draw the line and we have to get on with this. But yeah, it really was just distractingly loud on the vocals. For some reason, I always turn my vocals up too loud and it's something that I'm working on getting better at. But now we are ready to export. So to do this, we've got our little share button down the bottom here. So we tap on the share button, which is our box with our arrow popping out of it. And this is going to ask us where we would like to share this to. Now, the beauty part of the file system and the way things work here in iOS is that we can just scroll across our apps here and we can tap on copy to final touch. Now, if you don't have that here, scroll to the end and tap on more, and then you can actually add it in here. So if it's not one of the options that's available, but it should be in there by default. So let's tap on that one now. Now copy to Final Touch, it's going to take this WAV file and it is copied it over into our Final Touch interface with a brand new fresh blank template here in Final Touch. And this is what you'll be greeted with. The first time you use Final Touch, if you import something into it, it'll look exactly like this. And just really quickly, Final Touch is an application. It's a it's an app on iPad only, not available on iPhone. It is an amazing mastering platform. Uh, it does cost to buy, so I think it's about $20 US. It costs about $30 Australian, I believe. And yeah, it, it is a, a worthwhile investment. I don't, you know that I don't say to buy a lot of stuff. I'm not a big gear fan. I'm not a big person that will tell you that you need to buy all the latest apps and third party plugins. But when it comes to something like this, it's the best way to master that I've found. So here is Final Touch in all its glory. If we just hit play, it is going to start playing back our song. So it's sounding good at the moment, and this, as you can see, we've just got our basic default settings here that Final Touch open with. So let's take you through a quick tour of our Final Touch interface. And I'm actually gonna go right to left with this one because the most important thing that we have here is over on the right-hand side, and that is our input and output meters. So here we can actually adjust the input volume of our track coming in, and we may need to touch that. So we may need to drop that input volume down as we go through, and I'll tell you why as we do it. And then we have our output volume, which we can also adjust. We'll leave those at unity gain at zero at the moment. The other thing that's really important down here is this big power button. So when we tap on that power button, look what happens. Our little items there over on the bottom left go into the chain and go out of the chain. That is the next most important thing, is this orange line that goes along the bottom of this chain of effects of our pre-EQ, our reverb, our dynamics, our stereo imager, our post-EQ, and our maximizer. We've got a line there, so when we turn it on, it drops these in here. So these are, uh, think of this as your effects chain. If it's a l real literal cable, it would be the cable being connected to all of these things. So we can remove these by tapping and dragging and bringing them up out of the chain. So we can remove each individual one manually, or we can put them back in by tapping and dragging them back in. And by default, this is what it will set up with. So by default, when you've got your final touch, it will do this. It will put a pre-EQ, which is just a drop there. And you can see all that that's doing is dropping the bass down. So this one here, it is just dropping that bass. And if we slide it, we can adjust how much of that bass has dropped down. And you can see there that we're, it, it defaults at about 30 hertz and it drops it down by three dB at 30 Hertz. So that's not very much. And all that's doing is removing any of those sub bass frequencies that are not gonna be uh, audible. All they're gonna do is add sort of rumble and uh, interference to your sound. So you don't want those in there generally. You can of course remove that if you want to and go with complete zero, have no EQ at all going in. If you're 100% happy with your EQ going in, you can put nothing there or you can just flick it up out of the chain and it will no longer be in the chain. So we'll leave that down there for now. The other thing it adds by default is our dynamics, but it doesn't actually do anything with this. And dynamics is a multi-band compressor. 
So to explain a multi-band compressor, think of it like an EQ and a compressor brought together. So instead of your compressor just compressing one, your entire song, so you just got your compression on your whole song, what this is actually going to do is going to be able to compress at different frequencies. So the bands that we have across here, this one here, this one here, and this one here, we can actually adjust each of those. We'll just double tap them. Actually, no, these don't have double tap. That's right. <laughs> That's one of the things that I thought was uh, was a bit strange with uh, with Final Touch is we don't have double tap to return to zero, which we do in a lot of our other apps. So we just need to readjust those. Um, so what we can do with, the, with this is if we want to compress, so if we're not hearing the treble loud enough and we want a little bit of enhancement on the treble, then we can actually boost just the treble frequencies by compressing them. Same with our bass, same with our mid-range. And we've got complete control of these. We can actually adjust where these are and exactly what the, uh, what the different frequency ranges are. So we'll get to that when we start playing around with our dynamics because that's one of the more important ones. Probably one that I use more than anything is the dynamics and the pre-EQ a little bit. Uh, we've then got in the chain our maximizer, and this is probably the key. No, it is the key thing, because this is our limiter. This is our brick wall limiter that sits at the end of our chain, and this is what makes our song radio ready. This is what brings the volume up to a competitive level. So I'm going to actually start with this, because we can adjust it then as we go, but my advice is to start with the maximizer, so start with your limiting, because if you do nothing else, if you take these out of the chain and all you do is limit, you're still gonna get a better sound. The pro setting it through Final Touch, processing the sound and limiting it is gonna improve it. And I'll show you what I mean. If we take everything off, again, we'll use our handy dandy power button to turn everything off again. Let's come to a part of the song that's a little bit louder here in the middle. So at the moment we have literally nothing on except for, and, and what we'll do is we'll turn this on and we'll see the maximizer. So watch our meters over here on the right as we play. And when I turn it on, you'll see the difference. Sing with me and we're dancing in six and eight time. Now I found a reason. So all it's done there is it's lifted the volume. It's, it's limiting it. So a limiter is just a compressor uh, or a compressor is just a limiter, whichever way you look at it. But it's actually lifting the volume. And the key thing that we're using here is going to be this threshold dial over here on the left. So the threshold, if you've uh, watched some of my compressor videos where I talk about threshold, it is at what level that is going to kick in. So with the threshold all the way up here where it was, it is only adding a little bit of additional gain. So you would have seen over there on the meters that it's only adding a little bit. It's not pushing it right up to zero dB. It's definitely not like flatlining it up at zero dB. What I'm gonna do now is let's uh, turn this on again. And what I'll do is I'll bring down this threshold as I play it and watch, but also listen to the impact that this has. Cause I'm gonna go a bit nuts with this. So pre-warning, we're gonna get a little bit of distortion and artifacts in here. Cause I wanna show you what, the thing I see that folks do wrong the most is that they try to push this threshold too far and you can get some really bad results. So let's hit play now and I'll adjust this threshold and you'll be able to hear the difference. I should dance and there would be romance around the corner. Ten years later we would be as one. So there you go. Hopefully you heard that when we hit around about minus 6 dB there, uh, or 6 dB on the threshold, it sounded okay. As soon as we got down here, it sounded really bad. And I spared you putting it down like this because you would have just heard pumping, distortion, crunchiness, and it would have sounded absolutely terrible. So uh, that is my number one piece of advice with something like this. And I said it before, less is more when it comes to mastering. You want to get things right. You want to enhance your track. You don't want to crush it to the point where it sounds either lifeless and just dull because it's all so level or you start introducing distortion because again if you don't have distortion going in you definitely don't want distortion on your track coming out at the other end so that is the the key thing that we're going to do here so let's dial this in and watch the meter on the right and i'm just going to dial it to the about the level that i want for this maximizer so let's hit play a different kind of fun but one that's lasting Quiz. Only wish there was more time. 
So that's probably going to be about where I want that to be. Now, the other thing that you might be able to see here is the ceiling, the one next door here, which is at minus, minus 0.3 at the moment. So if you push that right to zero, you're going to risk clipping. So this is basically the ceiling, which is the top end of where we want that to be, where the brick wall is going to sit. So I, you can put it at negative minus 0.1. I just tend to put it at minus 0.2 or 0.3 where it recommends we have it. So we'll just dial that back in. Let's leave it minus 0.2 for now. Let's live on the edge, hey? Um, um, so yeah, that, that's the most important thing. I know I'm going right to left here, but that's the way that I address things because you know what? If we just went with this right now, let's just turn it off and back on again and listen to the difference. We've already done something with this mastering. We've, we've added a limiter and a lot of the times a limiter is about what you need for mastering. You don't need a whole lot more. So yes, there's a whole bunch of cool dials and knobs and presets and things which we'll talk about in a minute, but this may be the majority of what we need to do. To go dancing. So yeah, at this point you might be saying, why is louder even needed? Why do we need to make things louder? It's really, it's, it's to be competitive. It's to make sure that when your song is sitting in a playlist with a bunch of other songs, or you're being streamed on Spotify or streamed on Apple Music or on YouTube, that someone's not playing another song, then they flick to your song and suddenly the volume drops. So that's why we need to push it up and make sure our gain is sitting up at zero dB because we need to be able to make sure it's competitive. It's radio ready, even though no one listens to the radio anymore. All right, let's take a quick look through at the rest of these. And again, this isn't going to be a comprehensive video. We're all already a long way in here um, and we haven't done a lot in terms of mastering but there's not a lot to do but I'm going to show you some of the cool options that we have here because we may want to use the pre-EQ and the, the dynamics particularly so let's go through these one by one so the pre-EQ, if we tap over here, this is literally a, a parametric EQ. So just like we can use our visual EQ in GarageBand, we can dial this in. We've got up to eight bands. We can tap on these to add in our additional bands if we want to. And then each of these bands we can adjust by going up and down there. We can adjust over here, whether they're a peak, a high pass, a low pass, high shelf, low shelf there. If you don't know much about EQing, don't stress out right now. Uh, the other thing we could do is we could actually pinch these in to change our cue. So if we take two fingers, drag out, we can make it a wider cut or boost. And if we pinch in, we can do more precise EQing. So they're the main things that we can do with the EQ here, the pre-EQ. And the reason that we have two, might as well cover this now, a pre and a post EQ is they do exactly the same thing. But what you might find is sometimes you might uh, do your pre-EQ, you're going to add some reverb, you add your multiband compressor, you put a stereo imager on there, and then you're finding that there's frequencies that are poking out that you then want to tame at that point. So that's where your post-EQ can come in and can help out. If you're having to use a whole bunch of pre-EQ and a whole bunch of post-EQ or a whole bunch of anything in mastering, think about whether you need to go back to the mixing phase because mastering is not to fix problems. Mastering is to enhance, to improve, to make it radio ready. If you're fixing frequencies, if there's things that are not right, don't wait till your mastering time to do that. Go back to your mix and fix them there. So back to our pre-EQ. The cool thing about all of these and again, we're going to rush through this. If you do want a comprehensive Final Touch uh, tutorial, let me know and we will do it one day. But to be honest, I haven't delved into it in as much detail because I just want to get my tracks mastered, get them sounding the way I want them and then move on. But the other cool thing that I tend to use a lot of is the presets. So in each of these, <coughs> excuse me, in each of these, uh, if you tap on Untitled up the top here, we can actually go into all of our presets and there's a whole heap in here that we can actually choose. And what I tend to do with my tracks is because I'm not a mastering engineer and these have been um, designed by people that know a lot more about mastering than I do. So a lot of people poo poo uh, presets and say, don't use presets. Everything must be handmade and custom designed. And I'm like, who's got the time for that really uh, at the end of the day. So I do use the presets as a basis and then I will tweak and adjust to make sure it's sounding how I want. So what I will do, let's put, um, Funnily enough, I use the Rock Brightness preset, which looks like this. And uh, this just seems to enhance the sort of tracks that I do. Even an acoustic track like this, it's not really rock, uh, but it tends to work out well. I'll, I'll show you what this sounds like in a moment. But what it's actually done here, if you look there where we've got 0 dB, is that it's, it's cut the bass there. It's got a little cut around the 500. And then it's got a little boost around about that sort of uh, 7, 8K 
mark there. So it's not doing a whole lot here, but it's just adding a little bit to the track. So let's play this back, in fact. And what I'll do is we can uh, turn this on and off. The other thing we can do, we've got a power button up here next to each one. So if you want a quick way to, to turn them on and off, we can do that to bring them out and into the chain. Rather than dragging them down the bottom here, we could just tap this power button up in the top left. So I'll do that. Let's turn it off. I'll play back a section here and we'll hear the difference with this rock brightness added. Most of each ride, I'm happy to see that you're waltzing with me and we're dancing in six and eight times. So what it's probably done is it's just added a little bit more presence. Because it's had those bass cuts in there, we've got a little bit more presence in our mix, which is good. Now, what I'll do here, let, let's change this around. Let's go with something. I'll, I'll probably go with that or, or a version of that when we go. But what's one that we can do? If we go something like emphasize bass. So let's put this in here. What this has done is it's given us a bass boost down here. If we take a listen. Now I found it's not really what we want in this mix, but what I wanted to show you here is one thing we have to be careful, and in fact, let's just go nuts here, and let's just emphasize a bunch of stuff, um, and just push up some, some random stuff. What will now happen is that we're now, we were already, because of GarageBand's auto-normalizing, we were already pretty close to 0 dB, and what can happen in mastering in Final Touch is that Every boost you make is increasing that volume. And what you may need to do is keep a really close eye on your output from each of these. So this output here on the particular pre-EQ, if you start clipping on here, then you may need to start dropping this down. So let's show you what I mean by that now. Let's hit play. A reason I should dance. Okay, that sounded really bad, right? So uh, let's just drop this down. You don't have to keep listening to it sounding so horrible. But you would have seen there that these meters here went into the red. Um, let's just, uh, I'll, I'll turn down, uh, I'll, I'll turn down the volume of it coming through here just so you don't have to hear it so loud. And there would be romance around the corner. So there you go. You can see there that we had they went into the red there on our output gain. So that is not what we want at all. So uh, what we then would need to do is actually drop down this level so that if we did have it up loud like that, and we we're playing back. Ten years later, we would be as one. So what we're basically doing there is that we're making up for, for any increases we make here. Keep an eye on your outputs and your inputs across all of your different uh, all of your different settings here because you're going to find that you easily clip. And again, the number two thing I see people do, apart from pushing their maximizer too loud and getting that pumping and that distortion there, is that they clip. And I did this originally. If you go back to some of my other videos, I was a little bit unaware of this. I would add in boosts into my EQ, and then it would start clipping my signal. And I thought, well, what's going on here? Why is this so bad? That was the reason why. So be really careful with the output and the input, because as you go along the chain here, you'll notice that each one of these has its own output which means that we can actually adjust that as we go through so that by the time we hit our maximizer, we should not be at, you know, plus 10 dB clipping gain because it's not going to sound good. So keep an eye on your clipping and on your levels and you'll get a really good balanced sound. All right, let's go back and go to our presets and go back to our rock brightness that I like here. And there we go. So that is back in there. So now we've just got our pre-EQ and our maximizer there. Now, reverb, I very rarely touch. Reverb is just a reverb. So it's a reverb plugin. If you're adding reverbing mastering, you probably need to, again, go back to your mixing and take a look at what you've put in there because most of the reverb delay, that sort of thing, should be in your mixing process. If you're finding that your mix is just not gluing together or you've maybe you've got a mix from someone else that you're mastering and you're like, yeah, they didn't add enough reverb here. It's not gluing together. Play around with your reverb and once again we have all of our presets up here that can help us out with that but i'm not going to touch on reverb too much today um, i did in a previous video i tested it out on one of my tracks so i'll link to my previous mastering video as well that you can check out but one thing i will use is the dynamics because a multi-band compressor just enhancing or just tweaking some of those frequencies can actually sound really good so let's slide this down bring it into our chain and let's find a preset again we're going to use a preset let's find a preset to to work with on this one and make it uh, sound good what should we go with let's try uh, i keep using rock uh, i think it's because i want to be uh i want this to be a rock song and i'm i'm not going to leave these at these default settings because this is going to really boost it and really push it so i'll probably find i will find that i'm going to have to reduce these down once i actually play this track back so let's take a listen to it now with all of these at the default settings the default dynamic settings here in our multi-band compressor Making the most of each ride 
Okay, hopefully you can hear that that is just too crispy now. So it's, it, yes, it has enhanced it and makes some of those parts sound better, but not only is it sounding too crispy, it is now peaking our output uh, on this particular uh, this particular plugin. So we don't want that. We're getting the red over here. So if we did go with it like this, if it was a rock song that needed all of that, we would leave it like that. But what I'll do now is I'm actually going to reduce down, especially this treble boost. We do not need a 6 dB treble boost. Let's bring that down to around about 3. Let's drop this one down and let's drop this one down. And I don't mind this, this bass being up there a little bit. So you can see there, the middle line there is our zero dB. And then we've just got some enhancements of the bass, enhancements of the treble here. And it's, again, this is, this is compressing it. So it's not just putting the volume up. The difference between this and an EQ is it's not just blindly putting the volume up. It is actually squashing the top of that and bringing everything else up. So we're getting more clarity. We're getting more consistency in the volume. So let's play this back now. And if you're watching the meters there, you'll see those little red bits that are popping down and that's showing you how much attenuation there is on each of these. So how much is actually being compressed. And again, if you if you see big giant waves going there, then you're probably pushing it too hard. What we're seeing there is just some subtle little compression happening going on there. We're not clipping our output meter here as well because we're only doing these small adjustments. So everything is looking pretty good and I think starting to sound pretty good. Um, let's move on from there. The... What, what we'll do now, what, what I like to do as I go along is I do a few listening tests where I will just turn everything off and turn it back on again, just to make sure I'm not losing my mind and I'm making it sound too different to what we're actually going for or, or um, being fooled by the volume because you can easily be fooled by the volume. Now, the, the challenge here is that ideally you would listen to it at the same volume level, pre-mastered and mastered. You can't really do that in Final Touch without changing the output volume of your, your uh, unmastered version. But let's just use our power button again. We'll turn that off down the bottom left. Let's come to our section. Actually, let's go to our final bit because your final chorus or your, your final, your loudest section, your real crescendo is where you want to make sure that things aren't going too nuts because that's where you can risk clipping, you can risk distorting if you haven't got your mastering right. So let's play this now. So that's pre-mastered. I'm actually pretty happy with how this is coming together. Again, we've got some very subtle moves here. All that we're really looking at here is a couple of cuts there in our bass, a little bit of a boost in the, the treble there in our EQ, and then our dynamics. We've used that rock, uh, rock Dynamics preset, and then we've just adjusted that to fit the song better. And yes, there's a whole bunch more dials. The thing is, I do videos like this and people say, you didn't talk about this, you didn't do that. Um, you don't have to. Just because they're there doesn't mean you have to use them. In fact, Again, I keep saying it, but less is more. However, people do like the stereo imager. So I am going to touch on that quickly because I haven't talked about the stereo imager and it may or may not work in this song, but hey, let's give it a little bit of a try. So we'll bring it down into our chain here. And now there's a bunch of settings that we have here. We've got a mono filter over here on the left. We've got the amount of stereo width that we can dial in here. And then we've got our right pan and our left pan over here that we can play around with. And we can even shift the phase. So we can shift the phase of our left and our right. So we can actually get some pretty cool effects if you, if you were looking for something to use as an effect. And you can use Final Touch just on an individual track. If you wanted to bring an individual track into Final Touch, use it like an effects engine, then send it back. You can absolutely do that using the exact same methods. But anyway, let's just grab one of our presets. So let's just go with a wide spread here. And you'll see here that we've got the mono filter at 300 on this widespread. Stereo width is up there at 7.9. And this is really going to spread out our song. So let's come back to this final chorus section and we'll play it back again and we'll listen to the difference. So we'll turn, we'll leave it off and then we're going to turn it on using our power button up here. It's going to drop it into the chain and we'll hear the difference between these two. Time, time after time we are standing in line and we're 
Okay, that didn't work at all because it has boosted our output so much that it is distorting uh, to all get out. Let's just bring this down a little bit in our mix. Okay, so that's about right now. I've had to just adjust the stereo width. It was way too wide there and adjust my output meter. So you can see how quickly you can go from a good sound to a sound that's just terrible because, again, using the presets can be <laughs> dangerous for things like that, as good as they are. So let's just play this again. I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it back on again. If you're listening in stereo, you'll be able to hear that it kind of it pushes out the width of the song. Let's play it. I'm happy to see that you're waltzing with me and we're dancing in six and eight time. Time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most of each rhyme. I'm happy to see that you're... So, yeah, I, I really don't like it on this song. I don't think it fits this song. This song is a pretty narrow anyway. I used a LCR panning with this song, which means we've only got things on the left, centre and right. There's not much of a stereo spectrum anyway, so it actually has a decent amount of stereo width because things are pushed so far. So I think adding the stereo imager doesn't sound good. If you've got a mono track or if you've got something that you really don't have a lot on the edges and you do want to push those out, you can do it. And, oh, by the way, what the mono filter is, is that says don't do this. So don't add stereo width to anything under that frequency. So if we have this at, say, 300 hertz, it means that things like our kick drum and some of our bass frequencies are not going to spread because you don't want your kick drum sitting way out wide. You don't want your bass sitting way out wide. You want to keep those centered. So that's the basics of the stereo imager. So as I mentioned, this isn't a comprehensive view of this, but this is what I do for mastering. So I'm pretty close to what I think is my final mastered version. And what I'm going to do is for the end of this video, we're going to go out. Uh, I'm going to play back. I'll turn my microphone volume down and I'll play back this song end to end. I'll be making a few little adjustments that you can watch as we go along. Uh, just if there's anything that I think is poking out, keep an eye on the meters, uh, keep an eye to make sure that we're not clipping. If I miss something, let me know in the comments afterwards, because we are pretty close to getting this song finished, mastered, and released, which is our next phase. So thank you again for watching. If you've got other comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below. Um, I'll see you on the next video, and now let's go out with the latest mastered version of my song 6 and 8. chance and have the talent but I would rather sit and play with toys and hang out with the boys and start some trouble so she dragged me away all the while trying to say son there'll be time for all Time.
time is moving on Like a distant song you don't remember But I know one thing that will never fade The memories we made will last forever And my mother was right And to my delight Now I can pass on her words to the next generation Time. We're dancing in six and eight time. We're dancing in six and eight time. 